Hi and welcome to the Activity Puzzle Book Compiler. My name is Ryan Pumphrey. If you're wondering what those green things are flapping in, in the wind behind me, I'm out in my conservatory and it's a little bit on the sunny side so I've had to pull the curtains. So please don't be distracted by those while we're going through the video. Anyway, so now that I've got the disclaimer out of the road, let's move on. So we've actually uh, done a major upgrade. Uh, we've gone to uh, version number 1.5 from 1.1. Uh, what we've done is uh, more in the uh, background uh, engine room type stuff. Uh, what we've and the what you can see on the dashboard is we've actually uh, renamed the number of puzzles to the number of pages, and we've added the ability to uh, change the image format from a PNG to a, a JPEG. Okay, so everything else is uh, fundamentally the same as the uh, 1.1. Um, you'll find the biggest difference now is that uh, we're when it's actually filling out the puzzles on the page. Previously, and I wasn't aware of this until thanks to Paul, uh, it, instead of grabbing images one, two, three, four, five. Uh, in actual fact, if you selected five puzzles, it was going for puzzle one, four, uh, sorry, one, five, nine, thirteen, seventeen, uh, which can be really confusing when, you know, if you've, you've uh, made up a hundred puzzles, for argument's sake, uh, to use in here and you found the software screaming at you that you didn't have enough images. So, uh, you will see this happening uh, when we go into the uh, demo, but it's now dragging out uh, the images as per it should be from one to five uh, for all of these different puzzle uh, that you've actually selected here. Now, obviously, if you go to two, you'll only be using the first two uh, images of your uh, puzzles. So I know that's probably a lot to digest without seeing what I'm talking about. So let's get into the software and have a bit of a look around. All right, so I'm going to start at the very beginning here. You'll be wondering what the book number is. Well, obviously, if this is the first time that you're using the software, you want to start from book one. This has been uh, set up so that once you've done book one, you can go and go to, you know, uh, create book two, and it actually changes the uh, images for you from your image folder, so you don't have to do that uh, manually or manually. Uh, it's all done for you automatically, and uh, obviously the more puzzles, uh, more pages uh, that you select, let's say we want to have 40 pages with four puzzles per image, then we need to go from starting image of 41 to uh, last number of 80, and those will be selected out of each one of these paths and uh, set up in your PowerPoint uh, slide presentation correctly. So uh, that's the book number. Now let's go back to putting this on number one. We're not going to um, do a demo with 40 because that uh, will actually take a wee while to generate and uh, I hate trying to come up with something to talk about while the software is working away. So let's select, we want 10 pages and we want uh, four puzzles per page. So each one of these puzzles will be put onto a separate page uh, 10 times. So we'll be using image number one to image number 10 out of each one of these folders. Okay, so let's go forth and do that. So we can click on compile activity book. Oh, look at that. PowerPoint came up straight away, which is uh, really good. So what it does is it sets up the number of slides first, then goes through and adds the puzzles to the slides, like it's doing now. And once that's finished, it uh, sets up the next lot of slides for the answers and then puts the answers onto the page. 
and once that's done, there you go, you can see it's working. Once it's done that, then it actually uh, correlates everything so that when you have a look at your uh, template, obviously that this is not a video about templates, but we do supply you templates that you can uh, customize and uh, it does its little, puts the uh, slide divider between the answers and the uh, solutions for you automatically. And then there's two pages at the end that you can customize as well. So let's go back to the puzzles. We now see we'll puzzle one, two, three, and four. But each one of these puzzles, as far as it's concerned coming out of the folder, is puzzle number one. We've numbered it this way, so it's puzzle one, puzzle two, puzzle three, puzzle four, to make it easier for your clients to understand it, uh, the workings of your book and to go and get the solution. So the second slide is five, six, seven, and eight, then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Uh, where are we? We skipped one. Yeah, 21, 22, 23, 24, then 25, 26, 27, 28, and so forth, up to the last one in your uh, selection is going to be image number 40. So as you can, you should remember, we actually went for, and you'll get this dialog box up, coming up when it's completed. So. Remember, we wanted 10 pages and we wanted uh, four images per page. So that means we have to have 40 images, which is done. Okay, so now let's go have a look at the answers. In here, we have the same as one, two, three, and four. Also telling you what the puzzle is that they've been working on. And again, this goes all the way through to number 40. All right. Uh, so, I, I don't want to say too much more here because I don't want to confuse you from what we, was going on with 1.1. Just suffice to say, if you've got 1.1, you need to uh, go into the members area and download 1.5.0 uh, and play with it because it's far better. Um, we've improved everything on it. So, I'm going to get rid of that uh, PowerPoint slide. And what we're going to do here, uh, so you'll see that 25 pages is what it requires uh, in book pages. Uh, you may not have seen that, but anyway, we'll show you again. So when we go to two puzzles per page, the number of puzzles and images that we require don't change. So we still need to have number one to number 10, and we want two puzzles per page. So now it's only going to use puzzle one path and puzzle path two. So the number of book pages will stay exactly the same. We'll see this in a moment. Okay, so it shouldn't take that long uh, now that we're going through with just two puzzles per page. And you know what? That's really quick. Love it. A lot of automation uh, uh, hands down compared to uh, manual Right, so there we are. It's number tw 25 uh, pages to your book, which it says up here, 25 pages to the book. And now we have only two images per page, but we're still, uh, instead of going to 40, we're going to 20, because that's what we asked it to do. Give us 10 pages of two puzzles per page, so it gives us a total of puzzles of uh, 20 altogether. So that's in the uh, answers. So we'll come straight up here, a bit further up, and you'll see that it's answers one and two. And here we have, here's the actual puzzles. And then we'll scroll up and we get uh, puzzle one and two. So that's that part of the uh, software all sorted out. Um, if you have uh, JPEGs instead of PNG, that's fine. Just change the selector here to JPEG. Uh, now, if your uh, images that are in the folder that you're going to be using is JPEG, 
and you leave it on P and G, it's actually going to go all the way through the software. And it's not until it starts putting the images to the slides, it goes, oh, I can't find these images because uh, you've still got this selected as PNG. So if you're going to use JPEG, make sure you change this to JPEG. And likewise, when you go back to using PNG, uh, make sure you put that selected back. Now, once upon a time, we did have this set up so that you, you could just uh, use the uh, drop down um, list to select a puzzle name that you want. Uh, the majority of people using this, they're not using just Crossword Express uh, to create their Japanese puzzles. They've got all sorts of other puzzles that they uh, they get generated and used, so they want it just left open for them to be able to put whatever the name is of their puzzle uh, into there. So you might have a, a maze that's um, uh, a pipe maze. So you put pipe in here or maze or whatever. So that's why we've left that there. This is all pretty uh, you know, uh, self-explanatory. That's the word I was looking for. So when you go into here, like, okay, we're going to go and have a look for find a puzzle now we've already got it in there but what i want to show you is we've actually had a few people concerned that they can't find their, their puzzle images and uh, the software it doesn't care whether there's anything in there or not all it really wants so we're going to do going let's go to uh, our level four for the sake and let's click on puzzles so it puts puzzles in there when we click ok We've got the, it brings up the puzzle name, but if you'll notice when we go back to it and selected puzzles, there's nothing in there. But there is, as you can see. Uh, no, you can't see it here, but anyway, the software is only interested in this section here, the path. Okay, so, and then when you go in here to get the solutions, same thing. You just, you can just highlight solutions, or you can actually click right into it as well and click OK. Uh, again, it doesn't show you whether you've got solutions or not. It does not care. All it wants is this path to the solutions. And then down here, we've got a little bit of uh, data help, uh, a few things on um, how to use the software. I think if you actually watch the video more than going on the help here, you'll, you'll um, find the answer to your challenge uh, basically straight away. And this is the, the other thing that I really love that we've done with this software, and, and we had it with 1.1 as well, is that you can actually, uh, when, when I do the demos, I go through and I make sure that the puzzles will fit the, the, the template uh, immediately so when you get the software everything's all set up so if you change the uh, template or you change the uh, size of the images then you need to come in here and just uh, change the widths or reposition the, um, the images so let's just say for argument's sake just so I can show you this we're using, oops, sorry, we're using uh, multi 8511. Okay, so let's go and change that. And uh, I need to go up into the activity book and go into app book and go to puzzles. And let's say we're going to the 69 or uh, puzzle book number 69 so that's this one here so let's run it i know you probably think i'm just waffling on but i, I want to be sure that you see exactly how the software goes because uh, the last thing i want you to do is to buy it not know how to use it and then request a, a refund because um, that doesn't do you any good and doesn't do my, my uh, analysis any good either. So 
I'd far rather take a little bit more time in doing this video on the sales page so you can actually see what's happening. Okay, so now you see we have, I've already set this up, you see, so it's, it looks pretty good. So what happens, I'll leave that there. Go and say thank you, you know we've done that. And let's go into the two up and now let's change the height and the width of the puzzles. Okay, so let's go to 320, 320, 320, 320. Now that's going to look a mess. And let's say we, for the second lot of puzzles, uh, which is this one here, we're going to shift the from top down to or up to 290. Now that's really going to mess up how this looks. And we're going to put this down to 40. Now I haven't, <laughs> I should have uh, taken note of all the changes, but that's all right because when I can close the software, I'm not going to save it. So I'll put all the correct um, numbers back in there. Again. So we're going to rerun this. As you can see, it's doing that in the background. And you saw a hint of what it's done. And sorry, I don't. Okay, so here we go. You see, by changing those uh, images uh, or the destination and where they're actually going to sit on the page, uh, it's made this look a real mess, hasn't it? So that's why when you use this to put your own puzzles on, you may end up having this. So uh, don't panic. Just go into your oops, using software. Just go into your software. Thank you. When that's done, and go to the two up sizing and change these so that it uh, looks more like what we had the first time around. Okay. Well, that's it. I'm thank you very much for uh, watching uh, the video and listening to me jabber on. Uh, it's just an absolutely awesome tool if you're wanting to do, uh, you know, adult um, puzzle books or adult activity books or even kids activity books involving all sorts of different puzzles. Um, it's not good for doing coloring books or anything, that sort of thing. It's just uh, straight out for all sorts of different puzzles. Rightio, well, um, that's it for me. I'm My name's Ron Pumphlet, and I'm out of here. Talk to you later. Bye for now.